I first got into the blues um, primarily through the Rolling Stones. I was just starting to get into it and learn about it, and James Cotton came through Ottawa, where I was living, and uh, a friend of mine, we were both about 15, we went and saw James Cotton, and after that I just knew. It was like a big thump on the head. I walked away and I, I was never the same again. It was the whole show, it was, it was the way it touched me and, and the, re the truth of it, the reality of it, you know, the fact that everybody looked just like human beings and not, the fact that it was in your face and in a club and it was live and real and, I don't know, I just, something in my soul just opened up and I was never, ever, ever the same. When I was 13, I had decided I was going to be a guitar player. Um, I think, uh, as I'm told, by, you know, when I was a little girl, from maybe the ages of four and up, I already said I was going to be a singer and a musician. So when I was 13, it was guitar. It was our family instrument. My father and my brothers played, so that was what I picked up. And then by the time I was 15, it was blues. I was going to be a blues player. And was it? Clifford Antone at the Handy Blues Awards where we were traveling through Memphis at the time and he just told me to send him a demo tape. I, I sent him a demo tape and uh, when I got off the road and he called me back and invited me to Austin. Uh, he, liked the, he liked one particular song on the tape a lot. It was called Gone Blind and it's, it's on my first album. That was it. He just invited me and I stayed. I stayed for about eight years. To me, I, I attributed my experience in, in Austin sort of like the University of the Blues, you know. That's where I got a lot of um, exposure to a lot of guys that you wouldn't see outside of Texas even, you know, Tex-Mex and Cajunto and, uh, but the, you know, the Austin scene was really vibrant too. I mean, there's a lot of, not just blues, but great country, Junior Brown was there and all the Antones people were there, Kim Wilson, Derek O'Brien, George Raines, Luann Barton, Angela Straley, Denny Freeman, I mean these are all Texas legends, Doug Somm, uh, you know, the Texas Tornadoes, I mean I was just exposed to all kinds of the music from the area, Louisiana, Swamp Pop, and uh, Cajun music, I mean I, I saw everything down at Antones. What was, when I was 19, my favorite, my, my first quote that was ever in a newspaper, and it said, I can't wait till I'm 40. You know, it's because this kind of music, you, it grows with you, you know. And you've got to have life experience to be able to share with people. It's not that you can't say anything at 16 or 17, you can. And, and I did, because I had something inside of me that I wanted to talk about. But those experiences that you have, you know, everything you do and have experiences adds to your music adds to who, not just who you are, but what you can express and what you can relate to and what you can share with people. So yeah, I mean, now it's, it's infinitely bigger for me what I can share musically than when I was 19. And I know when I'm 45, it's going to be even that much bigger, you know. I'll have had that much more experience and that much more life. And blues is about life. It's about real life and truth and 
communication. Having a child changed it drastically. It changed my life forever, and it, it's probably the, the thing that I've done that's added more to my music than, than anything else in my life, I think. Because it's such a big experience, you know, and it's, and it's, and it's a, a living experience, and it's, and it's something everybody can relate to. I don't even sing about having a kid or anything, but um, it's just something that, ha that changes you when you're a parent, you know. You, you change your priorities. For me personally, I've, I became more focused, you know, I was m a lot more focused. I, I could, you know, I spent eight years drifting on the road, just living for myself, just drifting, head in the clouds, and uh, I don't do that. You know, it's, I have to walk the fine line between having to do what I was called to do and, and, and keeping my home life and my son together, you know? So I, I struggle and I, and I work real hard at that. That's all I really care about. I mean, I got to keep playing. I got to show him that this, when you got a calling in your life, you do it. And that's what you do. I'm not going to jeopardize his life or his happiness, you know? But at the same point, we have separations. And, that's just the way our life is going to be, I guess. All I knew was that I wanted to do, or to be able to share with, with other people what had been just shared with me when I walked away from that show. Um, all I knew is that my soul felt lighter, and I felt... Like I was just lifted, you know, I lifted up a bit and it, to, you know, a lot of people attribute blues, I mean, I'm talking about people that don't know any better, they attribute blues to sadness and to, and, and it is, I mean, the blues is obviously, is, is something about some of those dark feelings, you know, but it wasn't, that wasn't at all the way I felt when I walked away, when I walked away I was lifted up, I felt better, I felt like, like there was hope, you know? I, I just felt like, God, you know, like there's something real out there, you know? It, it was a, a really important experience for me. And it was, and the, and the, the calling to play it was so strong. I, I, I've never questioned it once in my life to say like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done this, you know? Never, never, never. It was so, it was like, bang, you're branded for life. That's it, you're going to do this. This is your path. And it's always been a constant, you know, and I, there's a lot of times I doubt different things in my life, but I've never doubted that. Never, never.